we're going to solve a dynamic optimization problem with Gecko. So the very first thing we're going to look at is the problem statement over here. We have, first of all, a minimization statement. We're going to minimize the value of x4 at the final time. So we have values between 0 and 1. And we're going to have uh, values that we're going to compute in between there but we're just interested in that last value for x4. Now we're subject to a few differential equations, four to be specific. The very first one is just the derivative of x1 with respect to time is equal to x2. We have our derivative of x2 with respect to time. Now we have something unique here where we have time specifically in the equation. And I'll show you how to set that one up. Okay, and then we have x3 with respect to time equals u. And then here's our nonlinear equation right here, a little bit longer, a couple more uh, you know, squared terms in there. You know, u is going to be to the fourth right here. Okay, so a little bit more complicated there with the fourth one, but we should be able to handle that. Here are our initial conditions right here. That's where you know it's going to start right at the beginning of the horizon. And then we have some constraints on the u value. So we're going to be adjusting the value of u in order to be able to minimize x4 at the final time. And u is going to be adjustable throughout the whole time period. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come up with, uh, you know, a discretization. But, uh, you know, technically u could vary at every time point, an infinite number of decisions between 0 and 1. Okay, we're going to go out to a final time of 1, starting with 0. Okay, let's set this up in Gecko. If you don't have Gecko already, then you could just go to the command line and do pip install Gecko. Okay, we're going to first of all just import NumPy. We need that package. We'll need matplotlib as well. And we'll also need Gecko. We'll import lowercase Gecko um, as the uppercase Gecko. And then we'll create our model. M is going to be our Gecko model. Uh, I have a number of time points that I have between 0 and 1. And so I just define m dot time equals linearly spaced values between 0 and 1. And we'll just insert nt in there. Nt is, so that is going to make the time points equal to 0 0.01 each. Okay, now I have some parameters. Uh, this is going to be my u value. This is going to be a manipulated variable. I could define u as a variable. Um, you know, I'm just going to give it a default value uh, there, and lower bound is negative 4, and upper bound is equal to 10. You could leave out the value if you wanted to. There's the status. I'm going to turn that uh, value on, so that means I'm telling the application to then calculate it. Um, also, there's a delta cost that, you know, by default it's a very small value, but I'm just going to zero that out. Okay, I have some variables as well. Here's time. So this is, I'm going to create a new variable time, and then I'll add a differential equation. Okay, so I'm going to add another differential equation, just to be able to calculate time, you know, where time uh, is initially equal to zero. And then I'll add another equation here, which is just d time d time equals 1. And so that will help me calculate uh, the time. OK, I could also feed that in as a fixed uh, parameter, you know, just like I did with m dot time. But uh, I'm just going to do that with, uh, you know, this t variable. So there's multiple ways to do that. OK, and now what I'm going to do is just have x1 x2, x3, and x4. And I fed in there initial conditions that you saw down here. Okay, those are the initial conditions that I'm feeding it. So those are the values at time 0. Okay, now I have uh, something I need to create a parameter that's just going to tell me I just want to calculate the objective at the final time. I'm going to have that be equal to zero, same size as time. And then just make the very last point equal to one. And I create a new parameter, final, which is m dot param. That's going to be a new parameter. And my value is going to be equal to p. So that's going to give those 101 values that are zero everywhere. And then just one at the very end. 
And the reason why we do that is because we need to be able to find our objective. It just says optimize just the very last value. Okay, now I have equations. I'm going to feed in my differential equations. There's my first one. This is my d time d time equals 1. Okay, my second one, which is just going to be my dx d1 uh, dt. dx1 uh, dt equals x2. And there's my second one. Okay, now I have time in there, t, you know, 16 times t. And then I have my x3, and then I have my x4. I'm just going to continue this one. Um, you know, I have, uh, this one should be point zero, uh, triple zero 0.005. I just think the solution, well, it's kind of interesting with the zero, zero 0.005. I'm going to change it just a little bit here. Okay, then objective function. And then I do my x4 times final. And the reason why I do this is because otherwise it would be minimizing the value of x4 at every time point in the horizon. And by multiplying it by you know something that zeros everywhere and then just one at the end, then it's just going to minimize just the x4 value at the very end. Okay, now I just have a couple options. I mode equals six. That's going to be dynamic optimization mode for gecko and then nodes that's going to be the number of collocation points per time interval okay i also have and i just put mv type equals one that just has a linear interpolation between the endpoints it's just how you set up the manipulated variable to be you know this linear interpolation between these uh, points i'm just calculating the endpoints of each step okay solver equals three that's going to be the ip opt solver that's that way by default anyway, so you could actually take that out. And then I'm going to solve it. Okay, I'm also going to print the path. I'll just show you where the files are. We can go look at those if you'd like. And then I'll print the objective. Let me print just the very last value of x4. That's the one that we're trying to minimize. Okay, and the rest of this is just plotting. So I'm just going to create a couple subplots just with my u. Uh, value my x1, x2, x3, x4, and then I put my time label and my y label as well. And I'm going to show it. So this is this is done. Um, you know, sometimes you get an error this way. So sometimes you do need to do the uh, u dot value instead. Okay, so that will. You know, sometimes I get an error just doing it the other way. I think there's just a namespace conflict or something. Uh, going on there so um, you can put the dot value there and okay so I'm gonna save this oops I did dot values okay and let me go ahead and save that and then I'll run it okay I'm gonna open up uh, IDLE to run this and then let's see what we get for our solution Okay, so it's going to run it with the IPOP solver. Uh, it looks like it took um, about 0.72 seconds to solve. And here we can see our final objective value, which is 0.159. Let's go back to our plot. Okay, you can see that U starts up here and it's limited between um, you know, 10 and negative 4. So it didn't really go down to the negative four value, but you can see it hit the upper limit right here and then went down, back up. And so we had a couple switches here, um, you know, as it reached different levels, but it found out that it would be able to minimize the value of X4, you know, this very final value right here by using this sequence, this hundred, these hundred different, uh, you know, decisions that it had to make for the u values, solving the differential equations for x1 through x4. Okay, let me show you, uh, we printed out the path, and so I just wanted to show you where, you know, what Gecko is doing when it um, is creating this problem. Okay, so there's the path right there. I'm just going to copy that and just put it into a temp folder. And so if you just paste that in here, okay, so this is what Gecko made on the back end. 
It made a model file. Okay, just renamed some of the variables. This is an AP Monitor model file. It made a data file as well. There you can see uh, it put in all of the inputs that we gave it. And it classified certain variables for us. I just had it 1MV there. Okay, here are some of the options. That's a JSON file. Okay, and here are some of the override options. You can see that there. Okay, just put in the, so for example, you can see the lower and upper bounds. Okay, and then the status and the decost, for example, those are ones that we set. Here's a results file. This one came back after it solved and then fed it back into Python. Okay, now the variable names are just, you know, they're renamed there because it did it internally and then exported it back so we could plot it. And here's also a JSON file that gives basically the same thing as results.csv. Okay, and it, you can have this run either locally or remotely. If you want to have it run locally, okay, then what you can do is just come down to the solve and do remote equals and then do false. And this will run it locally on your computer. Okay, so it will open up that little black box that you see there. Uh, for me it does. Uh, other computers I've seen it doesn't open up that um, executable prompt. Okay, but it gave the same solution. So that ran without an internet connection, didn't need an internet connection. Or I can do, uh, leave this as, you know, remote is true, but just change the server. Okay, so my server equals, and if I have a local AP monitor server, then I can run it right here. Okay, I just specified my server and then saved it. Okay, if you want to download a, an AP monitor server yourself, you can. Server, and you can do Windows. Um, okay, and there's just some instructions. Uh, you know, it takes an hour or so to set up this server. There's Apache, PHP, and then here is the download for Windows. You know, if you open that, you'll see um, if you come to the online folder, there's the actual AP monitor executable right there that actually runs the problem. Okay, so normally we just have people use the public or the default servers, um, but if you want to, you can run it locally as well. I'll just show you what, um, I just have remote equals true, and it solved it on my local computer with the, uh, you know, just the local server. If you want to go to the local server, go to Apache 2.4, go into htdocs online, and there you can see the gecko model that we just solved. Okay, it sent it to the server, it solved it, and then you see a few more files there as well. So that's kind of the back end of what's happening with gecko. I just wanted to show you you can solve this with or without an internet connection. If you just leave this off like this, and you know the server is just going to go to a public server and solve it. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial on setting up and solving this uh, dynamic optimization problem. We're going to go through some more of these as well, and I hope you enjoy the package. Um, you know, just pip install, and you'll have it for Python.